right, so the first M in MVVM stands for model, and that's what we're doing in this video. So what we're gonna do is build a model, which is basically a custom data type for our to-do list app. And we're gonna use a model for the to-do list items because our to-do list items are gonna have more than just a title. They're also gonna have a unique ID as well as an is completed Boolean so that we can determine whether or not the to-do item is completed or not. Now, of course, when you build production ready apps, a lot of times the model is gonna be much more complicated than what we're doing here. But uh, this example is going to be perfect for you to learn how to build models and then how to implement them into your app effectively. So with that said, let's take a look. So I am back in our Xcode project, of course. And in this video, we're gonna look at the model. So the model is gonna be the custom data point that we have for each of our to-do list items. And if we look right now, if we go into the list view, which is where I'm at, right now we have the list and we're looping on a bunch of items and the items is an array of string. And this is great because as we can see in the preview, we can change the title for each item, but there's more information here that we wanna include for each of these items. And the main thing that comes to my mind is whether or not this item is completed. Because right now we have the check mark on all three of these, but sometimes when we add items to our to-do list, they're not completed. So we don't want them to have a check mark here. And with the current setup right now, with this array of strings, we can't actually add additional data into this. We can't determine whether or not this item, this string right here is completed or not. So by making a custom model, we can create a data type that has both the title as well as a Boolean for whether or not it is completed. So let's right click the navigator and create a new group. And we're gonna call this models. So remember we're doing MVVM architecture. So now we have M for model, we have V for view, and in the next video we'll do the view model. But for right now, right click the models, create a new file. And we're not gonna use a preview in this file. So instead of doing Swift UI view like we always do, let's use just a regular Swift file. Go ahead and click next, and I'm gonna call this item model. Go ahead and click create. This will be a struct, and we're gonna call it item model. And we're gonna open the brackets. And you don't have to include the word model after it, but I like to, it is just a little helpful in clarifying that this is the model in our app. There are two main things that we have in our model. The first is the title. So let's say let title of type string. And the second is a Boolean, whether or not it is completed. So we'll say let is completed. And this will be of type bool. So if it's complete, well, this will be true. If it's not, it will be false. And this is pretty much it for our model. But if you follow the Swift UI Bootcamp, you are probably well aware that if we wanna use this item model in a for each loop, uh, it's much more convenient to make it conform to identifiable. So to do that, all we're gonna do is add a colon here and type identifiable. So now our item model will conform to identifiable. And in order to do that, we just need to add an ID into our item model. So we'll say let ID of type string. And for right now, we're gonna set it equal to a random string. So we're just gonna set it equal to UUID, open and close parentheses. This is a built-in function that will create a random ID. And then we'll just call dot UUID string just to conform it to string because I like making these IDs strings because strings are a little more flexible if we want to put them into like a third party database or something like that. So this is our whole model. And in the initializer right now, if we go to create an item model, it's going to ask us for a title and for is completed status. So now that we have this, let's jump back into the list view. And this items array Instead of an array of string, let's do an array of item model. And I don't have it pulling up here on my autocomplete. So I'm going to clean the build folder. And we can do that by going up to product and clicking clean build folder. But we could also do a uh, shift command K. That will clean, rebuild. And now if I type in item model, it should come up. We have an array of item models. 
So of course we don't need these anymore. So let's delete these. And instead we want item model. So we'll do item model, open the parentheses. And now we have our initializer that we just made. So it's looking for a title. Let's do this is the first title and is completed. Let's set it to false comma. Let's do another one item model title. This is the second is completed. Let's set this one to true and then comma item model open the parentheses and let's just call it third and is completed. I'll do false put a comma after it. So now we have an array of three item models and we're getting this error here because since we need the, since we're using this ID here, it's, it wants our item model to conform to hashable, but because we conformed to identifiable already, remember in our item model, we conform to identifiable with an ID and each of these items have an ID already. We actually don't need this initializer. So we could just delete this ID backslash self and we can just loop on the items. Now we also need to update the list row view. So I'm going to comment this out for a second and let's just put in a text of hi, just to make this go the error go away for a second. And let's jump into that list row view. So list row view, I'm going to click resume here. And right now when we create a list row view, we are passing in a title, but of course we just built the model. So let's actually pass in the item. So we'll call it item and it will be of type item model. And now our text, instead of referencing a title, we will reference item dot and we can see all of the variables within an item model. So it's that ID, the title and the is completed status. So the title will be what our text is of course click resume and we actually need to fix the preview down here as well. So what I'm going to do is create two item models uh, that we can use in this preview. So in this preview provider here, so because we're working in the preview, these variables need to be static, which basically means that they will not change. And you don't really need to worry about why we're using the word static here. This is one of the only places we're going to use it, uh, at least for this video. So let's do static var item one and let's set it equal to item model and let's just make the title first item you can make it whatever you want and is completed we'll do false let's create another variable here we'll do static var item two and we'll set this equal to item model and we'll do second item is completed we'll do true just so they have different is completed statuses and in our preview here well, let's delete this and we'll add a group and in our group and we're doing a group so that we can have two separate previews. We can preview uh, this list row view with the first model and the list row view with the second model. So we'll do list row view, open parentheses, and we're going to pass in item one. I'm going to again do list row view, open the parentheses, and we're going to pass in item two. Click try again on the preview and we should now see our two item models. And because we're in this group and we have two separate previews, they're building on two different iPhones. So the first one's up here and the second one is down here. But these list row views are very small, so we don't actually need to see it on the entire iPhone. So what we'll do is call dot preview layout dot size that fits and this will change each preview to the smallest size that fits our entire list row view. So now we can see the first item and the second item and let's customize these a little tiny bit. The first thing that comes to mind is that we only want the check mark if it is completed. So right now the first one is not completed and it shouldn't have a check mark. So we're going to use a ternary operator and we'll say item dot is completed question mark. So if it is completed let's use checkmark.circle. Otherwise, let's just use circle. So already on the preview, you can see that that first one does no longer has a check mark in it. And the second one, it still has the check mark in it. That's because the first one is false. The second one is true. Let's also change the colors based on that. So we'll do dot foreground color item dot is completed question mark. If it's completed, let's do color.green because that signals good. Otherwise, we'll do dot red. 
So the first one is now red, the second one is green. Let's make them a little bit bigger by calling dot font and let's do maybe title two. And I put it down here at the bottom of the H stack so that both the text and the image are updated with this font. And let's wrap this up with just a little bit of padding on the vertical axis and we'll add maybe eight. So that's it for a list review. We now have our list rows looking really good and they are dynamic. They'll change whether or not they are completed. So we have the red circle, we have the green check mark. Let's jump back into the list view. We're gonna get rid of our high, we're gonna get rid of the current list row view there. And let's just type in list row view, open the parentheses, and it's looking for an item. And of course, we're already looping on an array of items because we have all of our items here. So here, I'll just pass in item. And beautifully, we can see all of our items in the list. We have red circles for the non-completed, green circles for the completed. And this is starting to look like a real app. Uh, now that's it for this video. We created our item model. We implemented the item model into our view. And in the next video, we're going to add the view model where we add a whole bunch of logic for actually adding, deleting, and updating all of these items. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys are excited for it. This app is really starting to come together. As always, I'm Nick. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.